Hey everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz. Today we're going to be talking about the Topaz workflow. When we have so many programs that are in the Topaz lineup, 11 now, it can be a little bit confusing as to what to use first and where to use it within your other workflow as well. So that's what we're going to be discussing today. With that, let's go ahead and take a look at all of our programs. So let's take a look at what we have here. I've kind of set this up, the Topaz workflow, in a tier system, starting from the left. So if you're going to be using InFocus, Denoise, or DJPEG, you're going to need to use those um, as part of your workflow first. The reason being is the other programs within our lineup are actually going to negatively affect what you might be trying to correct over here with InFocus, Denoise, or DJPEG. DJPEG, of course, uh, eliminates or tries to lessen uh, JPEG artifacts, heavy JPEG artifacts. It's really great at that. Denoise is probably one of our most popular plugins. It's an amazing noise reduction program and something that needs to be used at the beginning of a workflow. And that's for any type of noise reduction, whether that is something you do in Camera Raw or a different program. Noise reduction should come at the beginning. Then you also have InFocus. InFocus is an amazing capture sharpener. And it can, or it can help to correct a little bit of blur in your image up to 10 pixels. So all of that should be used in this first tier. And I'll tell you which programs to use first in this first tier as we move forward. Then we have our second tier, which is the black and white effects adjust and lens effects. And we'll go over which ones to use first out of these as well. And then we move on to Clean and Simplify. Clean and Simplify are usually used to create artistic, photo artistic type of imagery, whether it's fo photo paintings or any type of photo art. So you can do a lot of different things with Clean and Simplify. But the thing to remember with these programs is that they're actually eliminating some of the uh, pixels within your image based on size within Simplify and based on uh, edge and texture within clean. So it's actually going in and manipulating those pixels and eliminating or adding them or changing them completely to look like a photo painting or a cartoon. So that type of thing needs to come last if that is what you're going to be ending up with, uh, a photo painting, um, etc. Then detail is something that I always say you need to use last. It is an amazing uh, output sharpener for you to use. Plus, you can really add a lot of creative sharpening in there as well. But I'd say uh, majority of the time, detail should come at the end of your workflow when you usually have already resized to the output size. So let's say you're resizing uh, your image to put on the web. Then you would take it into detail and, and output use it as an output sharpener or a creative sharpener. So that is a... Uh, kind of where it should go. Now that can change, of course, within uh, individual workflows and what you like to do. Some people like to do creative sharpening within the middle of their workflow and then use detail again at the end for their output sharpening. So that is somewhere detail can kind of go around within the workflow. Same thing with Remask and Star Effects. Remask is a masking tool and this is something you can use throughout your workflow at the beginning, at the end. It doesn't really matter. So this tool itself can be placed within the workflow wherever. Star Effects can too. This is our newest plugin. And the reason we're doing this particular quick tip webinar is because a lot of people are asking, where do I put Star Effects? Star Effects I like to put at the end for me personally. I find that the Star Effects become more natural if I don't go in and then manipulate them afterwards within Adjust or Black and White Effects. I find that they have a very natural quality if you, you put this at the very end of the workflow. However, some people are finding that they, they enjoy putting it when they're doing their main adjustments and then the Star 
effects or the glow effects or whatever you're using it for actually are manipulated along with the image and that's fine too it's really up to you I prefer to have it at the end but I stuck it down here in the corner because many people are finding that they like to put it wherever especially if you're going to be going to clean or simplify you'll want to use star effects kind of in this corridor right here after your main adjustments before you go in to clean and simplify so your star effects or your glow effects take on the artistic quality that you are using within clean and simplify so we have 11 programs we're looking out here we're looking at here I've never ever had a reason <laughs> to take an image into all 11 programs. Some people like to use every single program, but I tend to find that, you know, maybe I'll start out with denoise the majority of the time and hop into black and white effects or adjust, then lens effects, and maybe go into clean or simplify if I want to go into a, a photo artistic type of image but usually I just go to detail after I kind of skip over clean and simplify and then go to detail and then I'm finding I'm using star effects quite a lot for my light sources lately um, and then remask if I needed to work on selective adjustments or need to replace a background I would have done that when I was working on my image uh, the main adjustments so it's not necessary to take it into every single program but if you need to do so on that first here we recommend that you start with in focus especially if you're working on capture sharpening or or a little bit of blur so in focus then DJPEG which is going to have heavier larger artifacts that it's trying to get rid of and then denoise which is trying to get rid of the smaller uh, noise in your image now the only reason why this would change is in focus if you have a ton of noise a ton of high ISO noise within your image that is just really 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 obvious then you can take it into denoise first and then take it in for capture sharpening for in focus but if you're not dealing with heavy heavy noise then go with in focus first because it's going to give you lovely um, capture sharpening and really sharpen up your image right there at the beginning of your workflow then that second tier that we talked about adjust black and white effects and lens effects this is what we kind of recommend for for those three adjust or black and white effects they're kind of interchangeable they they have very similar uh, ways of adjusting the image and adjusting the pixels with the adaptive exposure technology and they're pretty much interchangeable but we suggest that you put lens effects after the use of adjust or black and white effects and this is because lens effects not only has filter technology uh, simulating actual filters that you would put on your lens which isn't necessarily going to change the shape of your pixels or blur or anything like that but then we also have lens simulation in here a lot of different lens simulation allowing you to add bokeh really beautiful creative blur and that's why lens effects is after these two because you want to get that blur after you've done your adjustments if that's what you're using lens effects for so lens effects after black and white and adjust all right everybody thank you so much for joining me uh, I hope to see you at tomorrow or next week's webinar take care bye bye